I'll try and give you some kind of introduction, but uh, I'm still practicing. Right. <laughs> so. uh, it's fine. I can just say, oh, no, uh, I, I make, I make <laughs> web music. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All righty, man, we'll do this. Okay. Um, welcome back, everyone. Uh, hope everyone's doing really well um, with this today slash tonight slash whatever it is uh joining us is uh bass Jenix from south africa he's a producer and uh just genuine chilled out dude and um yeah uh go ahead and let us know what you're all about dude uh yeah so uh i'm bass Jenix. uh <laughs> i uh produce uh edm heavy bass music kind of thing uh and i'm super inspired by like the you know, 2015 ish sort of, uh, scene of EDM music. And, uh, honestly, like, uh, I just want to create something new and, uh, interesting for people to listen to. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. Uh, so yeah. And, um, what genres are you mainly into? Is it dubstep and, um, or just, uh, the wub wubs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, in general anything <laughs> anything that has a baseline that wubs you're like yeah that's cool <laughs> yeah basically that's a good that's a good way of putting it i i do try to sometimes like i am very very inspired by the dubstep scene like it's uh one of the main things i want to go into uh as a musician but uh i like i still like a lot of other things like uh the sort of pop music from like uh you know like i said my 15 sort of kind of thing uh which is still bass music uh but yeah uh overall kind of just like heavy bass lines or very melodic sort of inspirational kind of stuff uh basically anything you'd hear in a gaming mix <laughs> so yeah um yeah that's that's me uh cool and so how did you get into it all and um how long have you been writing for um I've been writing for about three or so years, give or take, which isn't that long, really. <laughs> but, um, you know, I've uh, done quite a bit in that time and I'm super pleased with the progress I've made. Um, as for the other thing, the how did I get into it? It's um, it's kind of a funny story because I there's no definitive point at which I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do that. Um Initially, I wanted to do game development and develop like games and stuff. Uh, and uh, at some point, I got myself a copy of FL Studio, and I was like, "Oh yeah, okay, mess around with this." Uh, and at the time, I was really, really into Undertale. Um, so I made uh, a remix of one of the boss fight uh, songs called Megalovania uh, on my old channel. Um, and then I just never touched music for like another three years after that. Then I came back uh, after watching a tutorial from uh, a musician named Wubix. Um, He was pretty big uh, at some point, but then uh, he, you know, shifted uh, names and became Kaijo. And now um, he's a little bit more quiet and, you know, not as well known. But I watched the tutorial and I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. That looks simple. I can do that. And I wrote my first song and <laughs> here I am. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, it was it was all a very interesting experience because, like, um, I, I didn't expect for it to go this far. I kept on telling myself, like, uh, for the first, like, five, six, seven songs, like, oh, yeah, this is probably going to be the last song I'll release and then I'll go back to whatever it is and then... Um, you know, I, I stuck with it and, <laughs> um, you know, I really just became a part of the scene and involved with it. And yeah. Uh, um, so do you have many friends that uh, are also producers and uh, how long have you known them for? Um, okay. So in like a lot of my producer friends are like uh, I met online or through little communities and forums and stuff. Um my good friend, uh, there's a uh, hero. Uh, he produces, you know, that's his alias his tag. Um, he, you know, honestly is super inspiring and, uh, an all round amazing person. Uh, Zendarion, uh, is also a great friend of mine. I've, we've been friends for probably the past like a year or so, eight months, nine, so somewhere there. Um, then <laughs> my little, 
mini group I call the OTT trio, um, which is SK and uh, Spectre, uh, who renamed to Juven at some point. So I have a little group going on. Um, not a lot, but it's, you know, a nice little group of people that, um, you know, I learn from and, you know, just all around have a great time with uh, a lot of them. So Hero, I've known basically for like, uh, almost ba since I started producing music, um, like somewhere on my 11th, 12th song, uh, I started chatting with him. Um, and Zenarion, yeah, eight, nine months. Uh, and SK and Juven, I've known for also about the same amount of time, about, you know, seven, eight months. Uh, so yeah, uh, a lot of my friends though, uh, are kind of just, you know, going, chasing their own dreams and that's cool, you know? Um, but yeah, to answer your question, I have quite a few, uh, just a little group going on, uh, where I can just bounce ideas off and such. That's cool. And so what direction do you think you want to move in uh, for yourself? Where, where are you headed in like the next year or two? Um, in terms of a year, I'd say, uh, you know, continue producing songs, little opportunities here and there. Maybe um, I'm trying to get some like local sort of like DJ sets and stuff just to, you know, spread the word a little bit. Um, so in a year from now, I see myself maybe doing small gigs here and there, um, you know, somehow balancing school and music and, uh, you know, perhaps even uh, writing some, uh, you know, somewhat successful song. Uh, maybe, but that's, that, that's not a guaranteed. <laughs> yeah, write some hits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cool. Um have you played much before, like DJ sets or live sets or anything? Um, I've never done like, like, like I've never been in front of like an actual crowd. I think the closest to an actual crowd I've gotten is like a little uh, event uh, for a collective called Flopper Collective, um, yeah. where I do like I've done like three or four sets for them uh, over the course of the past like year and a half or something. Um, and yeah, a lot of my sets have just been little live streams I've done on the internet. Some of them I've deleted. Some of them probably won't surface. Uh, maybe I'll upload it to SoundCloud or something. Uh, I actually <laughs> have a set that I still should upload to SoundCloud. But um, yeah, I've done just little sets here and there. Um, but hopefully uh, I'll be able to do it on like a nice big stage. And uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it's nice when you have a crowd and yeah, I've, yeah, it's pretty much the same for me. I've just done a few sets here and there, uh, but it's so much fun, especially when there's a lot of people there, yeah. or a decent amount at least. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, how do you feel about like DJ sets with one or two of your own tracks thrown in there versus just a complete, I wrote everything and this is, <laughs> this is all mine? Um, yeah. Um, because they're so quite different. In terms of yeah. um, even just performing them, I, I find it's a lot easier to DJ other people's music. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do you agree with that? <laughs> yeah, to be honest, like the thing is, well, like on the one hand, um, where I want to go with music is probably going to be mostly comprised of playing my own music, um, because you know I won't do like big, you know, events that like. Uh, what is it? Lost Lands and um, stuff like that, where a lot of it is kind of either playing music that, uh, you know, an ID, an artist sent you, or you're just like all your own music with maybe some little songs that you like sprinkled in there. Um, because, you know, you do kind of have to make for a specific time and not everyone has like four hours worth of music uh, to fit in. Um, or maybe they just don't want to only play their music, but overall, um, playing my own sets uh like where all the songs are mine i feel like that's the point i want to get to but not the point i'm at um as for playing other people's music i just find it a, a lot more fun because it gives me like I, I guess more of an intricate sort of appreciation for the little things that they've done here like uh oh cool they put a dance sweep after the drop now i can mix in the next build up without having to you know 
twist, you know, 900 knobs. So yeah, <laughs> I don't know, like something like that. Yeah. And so do you keep that in mind when you're writing a track to, I know some people have like a template where they'll build in one minute of just a beat at the start and the end, uh, just to help DJs to mix it in and out. Yeah. Is that something um, that you allow for and, and build in or you just sort of just focus on the music? I, a little bit of both. Like sometimes I go in with the sole intention of trying to make the type of song that you, that would just completely, uh, you know, tear up the entire festival. Uh, just like, you know, people like, several hundred meters away would be like damn this is sick um but on the other hand uh sometimes i just want to make something that's just like casual like my song uh was it like hope for happiness that song i had no real intention with it i just kind of was like uh drums that do this uh bpm that's super unethical like 135 because i've never heard of a genre in 135 to be honest um <laughs> i still oh, really? have yet to explore that no <laughs> i have <laughs> uh, my friend says like uk garage i think uh so uh maybe that yeah yeah I it don't... could be close <laughs> yeah um i ride at 135 mostly oh uh, yeah progressive trance uh, oh okay yeah i like it and um yeah i don't know i've had a, a friend recently introducing me to some of the uk garage stuff and it sounds yeah it's it's a good sound and a good tempo i quite like it yeah um but yeah like usually like there are some songs like some bass songs where i'm like oh this would completely kill it at a festival but there are other songs where i'm just like you know what sometimes i just want to make something that sounds cool uh and you know isn't conforming to a specific genre like my mm -hmm. song void completely forgot to you know think of a genre beforehand i just went in and was like sequence drums oh, this is a cool piano loop. I put that in. Uh, cool vocal. Toss a little bit of that, you know. Um, mm. <laughs> so I just kind of like, here you go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I kind of yeah. like that, uh, especially with down tempo. You're pretty much free to just do whatever you feel like and then just add in some details later on and pretty much ignore BPM and all the rest of it. Yeah. Uh, and certainly ignore like allowing for DJs to mix them together because um, down tempo is just not really like that. There's uh, yeah. a lot more atmosphere and it's a lot less focused on the beat. Um, uh, out of curiosity though, like uh, for, for you, do you kind of do that, that thing where you kind of conceptualize based on what a set would, uh, I guess, require? So like you'd say, oh, down sweep here so the DJ can whatever, or do you just kind of just say, you know what, whatever I make, I make. So, uh, like, um, yeah, I, I kind of took the path of just straight up producer. I mean, I started out DJing a bit and then just wrote tracks and wrote more tracks until I had enough to play a full set. And, um, that's all I'd keep in mind is I wouldn't worry yeah. about mixing. I'd just worry about what the actual music was and that it all fit together and it was able to be in a certain time slot. And, um, yeah, it was quite fun. I remember getting a set lined up at a club in like two weeks' time and during that two weeks I wrote two complete new tracks specifically for that night and specifically for a <laughs> yeah. club as opposed to outdoors and um, yeah, it was just really fun and uh, something about having that deadline there and um, having the opportunity to play something new there just really yeah. sort of brought it out of me. It made it really simple and fun and enjoyable um, and uh, uh, just a smooth process. Um, well, but yeah, yeah, I'd like to. Um, I'd like to learn more about DJing and actually get some equipment and um, get all that set up. And after that point, I think I'll, I'll write more with uh, mixing in mind. And um, mm. yeah, I mean it's it's pretty <laughs> simple. It's pretty simple to yeah. allow for it. But a part of me is a little bit like rebellious in that sense. And. Um, I just think, oh, if I could deal with this, I'll change the tempo. I'll <laughs> automate the tempo to go like from 
120 to 145 down to 130 to 135 through the whole middle of the track <laughs> yeah, tempo changes like, are the one thing that like <laughs> i stay away from them uh unless of course like it's supposed to set something up like um you start at 150 you have like this basically a bomb but a bit of and then it starts to you know slowly get faster and faster and faster um the tempo that is um and then like the rest of the song goes to 175 uh and it stays that way then it's okay because it kind of sets up it builds the mood and it's also then easier to dj because then you can just kind of let the song play build up uh goes on it then it goes onto the grid now so you, it's easier to mix and beat match and stuff um and then you can just kind of work from there instead of um this awkward sort of thing where it's like oh but my, oh tempo eh. uh <laughs> So, yeah, uh, I, I I do think I need to experiment with tempo changes and stuff, though, because I feel like there's a lot of potential there that I'm not utilizing. Yeah, it's good fun, and you can do it in subtle ways so that the track overall, the tempo is the same. You just sort of bend yeah. it in the middle, and it's, uh, it won't mess anything up. Um, like there's a track called Nine by We Plants Are Happy Plants. And, oh yeah, uh, yeah. He plays around with it. It's really, it's, it's an enjoyable thing to listen to. To get like halfway through, and then he just grabs the melody and just like slams the tempo way down, and then just slowly, <laughs> slowly brings it back up, and then you're back into the track again. Yeah, that that's like actually a pretty creative idea. You could like have this sort of section where like everything's kind of moving, and then it slows down almost completely. Like, uh, you know you do the tape stop sound effect or whatever um and then it slowly comes back up and then it, you know builds up and then woo, party <laughs> so yeah. and you don't uh, even have to do it with the entire track you can just do it with a certain section of it and then have other parts that are still in the same time yeah uh but yeah i think it's a really creative thing to mess around with uh though <laughs> I, I i'm pretty uh you know, risk-free in that uh, way. But at the same time, I feel like I should just have a day where I just go, eh, whatever. And then mm. I make, you know, just a random like sequence or patch, weird ass drums, friggin' tempo changes everywhere. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah. I know some people like DJs that will sort of across the, the journey of the set that they play, they will mess with the tempo. So yeah. they might take it from uh, one one thirty up to one forty five and then down to one thirty again. Or they might mm -hmm. just take it from one thirty up to one forty five and stay there. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I think there's uh, I find those transition sets really interesting, like from sunset to or well, from nighttime to sunrise or from sunrise to or from daytime to sunset, sorry. Yeah. Which is sort of like uh, going from light to dark and vice versa. And so the yeah. the genre blends and um, it's if you do it right, it's a nice sort of subtle shift where you don't really even notice until you sort of, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, and I, yeah. <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> uh what do you think about streaming and, and how much have you of that have you done uh so like just streams where you hop on uh do a live sort of thing and uh yeah so just live yeah live okay yeah live streaming um yeah. <laughs> so um i've done like two or three in the past uh and a, a lot of my dj sets have been live streamed um Overall, I think it's it's really fun. It's um, just, you know, hop in and see what happens, interact with the audience. Uh, uh, like, it's really just a good time, I think. Uh, it can be a little bit, uh, I, I guess, uh, stressful at times because um, you're constantly, like, making sure you don't open wrong windows that might reveal uh, very, like, like, you know, information that, like, I don't know, an ID or whatever that you don't want 
to show people yet. And then you end up showing people and you're like, Oh no, now my manager is going to kill me. I don't have a manager, but <laughs> like <laughs> just in, uh, you know, a theoretical instance, um, or if you would like, uh, but yeah, overall live streaming is pretty sick. Uh, and I, I, I should do more, but I need to find an alternative to OBS because, um, my, it, my, my, my laptop, essentially like it's at a decent sort of powerful sort of quality where it can you know power through a lot of ableton tracks and you know the cpu is complete monster um but then i install obs and it does some in the background rubbish where it's like takes up like basically 40 percent of my cpu and then the performance of the entire computer goes down just flat uh and I, yeah, so I need to find like some alternative that I can use to uh, stream because I really do enjoy streaming. Uh, it's really, uh, it's a really fun thing. Yeah, that 40% CPU, that's way too much. I thought it was a lot, <laughs> yeah. a lot lighter footprint than that. Um, I saw something before where um, a guy was saying if your CPU is too overloaded there's a setting within obs where you can change it to load up the graphics instead oh oh damn okay yeah i'll see i'll send you a link later yeah Yeah. i mean it depends on having a half half decent graphics card obviously but um yeah i think it's worth playing around with the settings just to see if you can unload some of that um to give you some headroom yeah uh I think my graphics card should be all right. I'm, I'm running a GeForce GTX. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what that means. I just, I just read the sticker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so so <laughs> the same thing as everyone else, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, but yeah, I think I think my graphics card is okay. It it can run Minecraft at five frames a second. I think I think I'm uh, I'm running the 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 high cpus uh yeah, yeah. It's, it's a decent gra- uh, graphics card um yeah mine's okay yeah. i just i switched to amd and just a single card because i had a i was running two nvidia and um they had automatic updates which you couldn't turn off and one of the updates just bricked both my cards and then my entire system and i had to rebuild everything damn <laughs> yeah. i I'm just, I, I just, I just have a laptop. I'm, I can't like, I, I've never built a PC in my life. So, uh, I mean, I'd like to learn at some point, uh, when my bank account decides to fill up. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty uh, much why you build it yourself is so you can just add parts as you can afford them and yeah. slowly collect over time. Yeah. Uh, that's what kind of what I like about it. It's almost like a modular kind of thing that you can just. Uh, oh, look! The new graphics card came out. I'm gonna sell my all my belongings to be able to <laughs> play League of Legends. <laughs> um, yeah. Or just sell your old, your old graphics card to sell that. <laughs> that too, <laughs> but it's it's not as gigantic. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> what uh, clock speed are you running on your CPU? Uh, I gotta say, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, I just kind of have it and it works. It, <laughs> it has 144 gigahertz of refresh rate, I think. Is that what that says? 144 hertz of refresh rate. Yeah. I read the sticker. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> yeah. Not, not big into the details. As long as it works, man, that's all you need to yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so how did you get your name, Base Genix? Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Well, um, so I have been through so many different names. I started off as 1900s because I wanted to start a band at school. Um, and I thought it was like, I literally came up with that name in the school bathrooms. I'm not even kidding. Um, (laughs) like, uh, so there was 1900s. Then after that, I moved to, what was it? Um, oh yeah. The comical songs, um, which was 
I don't even remember what my thought process was behind that, but I just, I made it my friend. I said, Hey, can you make a logo? And he was like, I'd say less. And then gave me a logo. Uh, and then I used that for like two, three, four months or something. Then after some time I was like, nah, not cutting it. Um, and I was on a discord call with, uh, that same friend that made that, uh, the logo. And, uh, I kept on saying MGL as like, uh, you know, the not going to lie abbreviation kind of thing. Uh, and then he was like, haha, wouldn't that, that be funny if it was your, your uh, music name? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> so um, <laughs> then I became MGL. Um, then I became Kairos, which um, was my, I think my mom just sent me like the, definition the google definition of it and i was like oh that's a cool name <laughs> and then i renamed to that uh and then finally after getting so tired of having like a a, a billion names that everyone else had because like you looked up my 200s there was already people there you looked up kairos there was already people there you looked up ngl there was already people named that yeah um so one night with my dad um we sat down uh, initially I was going to sit down and just be like, okay, I'm just going to search, uh, through, I'm going to put in random name ge generators. I'm going to think of stuff myself. Um, and I just had an entire session where I was just like coming up with names and my dad, uh, you know, he helped me and I'm super grateful for that. Um, so we sat there, like, uh, I compiled a list of names and one by one, we looked them up to see if there was, you know, uh, somebody named that, um, or if there's anything, you know, unpleasant that it could be confused with um so then uh, at one point i put an the uh i found this word generator called i actually don't even remember um so basically it allows you to type in a word like any word uh and then it will automatically take that word and put like other words that relate to that word behind it um so there was like base generator uh there was like uh base whatever it, i don't know i just typed in base saw what came out the other end one of them was base genix i was like oh that's cool i'll write that down um and we looked through all of them and base genix is the only one that is one of the only ones that came up with like no results um the other one that was a uh, very worthy contender was uh hot wire um because we needed like a very versatile name so if I decided at some point, oh, maybe bass music, I'll shift my focus to something else. Um, then, you know, I don't have to rename. I can just be like, uh, you know, I'm still that name. I'm just making something else. So, you know, I like bass genics a lot more because I feel like it, it, it was versatile enough to encompass what I do. Yeah. Um, just bass music uh, and genics. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is my thesis and TED talk on <laughs> how I came up with my name. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah. Have you heard of Bass Nectar? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I think yeah. I've heard of him once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. And um, yeah, I think it's that's sort of a similar path that I took. And um, I kind of like the idea of just having one name and you just release all of all of your music under that. Yeah, you know? that is, yeah. it's it's the best way to go, really, because like you don't now have to rebrand and like now imagine if you have like managers and labels and whatever. Now you have to completely like set that aside, make a new project, say, "Hey, I'm releasing stuff there," and everyone's like, "Okay, well, I'm gonna go there." Some people may not like be interested in that so now your follow account is like halved and the, it's it's just uh it's just not great for the long term so i think i'm very happy with it i feel like it encompasses you know me and it's one of it's the only name i feel comfortable pe with people calling me when people would call me kairos i'd be like nah. um uh when people would call me ng i'll be like uh but then now with bass Janix, it just it feels like my name. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, do you want to talk at all about 
the local scene in terms of music or just the local scene in general? Uh, and like, uh, how long have you been living where you are now? Um, okay, so <laughs> I'm going to unpack this. Uh, so as for how long I've been, uh, it's been like, uh, I, okay, yeah. So for seven years, I lived in London. Uh, and then for basically the rest of that time, so about, I've been living here for about eight, nine years. Um, so yeah. Um, as for the local scene, um, it's, I, the genre I think is, uh, some EDM, it's not like, you know, an EDM sort of, uh, you know, massive factory of EDM. Um, but you know, there's support here and there for, uh, for it. There's also this like big ass stage, which I just learned about recently uh that's somewhere uh, uh around i think where i uh, i stay um so that's exciting uh maybe i can get some big uh show or whatever uh there uh so yeah um but most of the the genre that i think uh is mostly uh here in the local scene is like you know hip-hop and um yeah i think uh, also like very percussive sort of music which I've also drawn inspirations from um at times like in my song sweet dreams the 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 kick pattern the boom 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 boom, boom. that thing um was <laughs> very inspired by uh you know the local scene of uh music and uh even a lot of my my other songs uh like okay time to give an example uh I don't have an example um, <laughs> But like, uh, yeah, but like overall, I'm also fairly inspired by the like hip hop and rap kind of thing. I've even tried <laughs> to record my own vocals and uh, bars as the kids call it these days. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, because like when I was nine or 10 years old, I'd listen to like gaming uh, raps and stuff and I'd learn them like back to front. Um, so I knew like the entire song off by heart, um, and I'd rap to that and I'd try to impress my friends, uh, at school, which was <laughs> quite, quite the deed. Um, but like, yeah, so I have a bit of a history of rapping. I don't know if it, if I, if I can still do that or if it was ever good, but I will try maybe. Um, I just need to find a way to get a half decent mic and practice rapping enough that I form a style that doesn't make me sound just the weird. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> the have, you heard, overall... um, have you heard Australian rap? <laughs> I have not, but <laughs> now I'm kind of imagining in my head what it could be. It's very weird. It's 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 almost impossible to do without it sounding weird. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I like I like the music. I like the beats. Uh, I don't really care for the words so much, but um, yeah, a lot of the just the way it's written musically is often really just enjoyable to listen to, especially with a good yeah. sound system. Uh, yeah, I <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Um, so do you have like a, a one hour demo set that you can sort of use to apply for sets to play at places or, um, um so literally it didn't even occur to me to maybe do that. But if somebody said, Hey, uh, can we hear some of your work? Uh, I do have little like 20 minutes from, uh, the flopper sets that I play. So I would probably send in one of those. Uh, and if they needed longer, then I'd probably just quickly record myself a one hour demo set where I can just, you know, twist the knobs, uh, push around the faders and wiki wiki. Um, but like, um, yeah. So I don't have any like readily available except some old sets that I have. But if somebody like right now messaged me and said, Oi, give us a demo set, then I'd be like, I, here's a flopper set. Um, and hopefully, that would make the cut. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I think um, stuff like that's really helpful to have just yeah. a- immediately ready to go at all times. And I don't really have that myself yet, but I'm sort of working <laughs> towards it. <laughs> There's, yeah, I mean, the future's all open for me. I mean, yeah. um, I'm in a similar sort of place. I'd like to start just playing local sets, and um, that's pretty much just what I want to do. Yeah, personally. I think uh, a great strategy for any thing really is just conquer your local scene then you know uh wherever else you want to go um so for me i my goal is kind of just to become you know fairly known uh in and around just so like my name is a completely ambiguous so when i sign to some label like my target at this point is disciple um but like because it's 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 weird obviously when you sign to such a big successful label and everyone's like oh cool who are you <laughs> mm. uh so i want it to be like a uh oh the sign to disciple sign to disciple and then you sign to disciple and then everyone's like well, yeah this person i know um so i just think as a strategy it works better um in the long term uh unless you know i mean listen it can work uh for people if they don't, uh, if they just kind of keep it to themselves and then the label discovers you and they're like, oh, that's cool. Um, you want to sign? And then you're like, oh, hell yeah. And then you sign and then, you know, everything's good. But uh, yeah. I like your um, attitude towards labels. You're just like, yeah, you sign and then it's all good. <laughs> it just worry works. About it again. <laughs> you sign and then it works. Yeah, this, you should watch some of the horror stories that are out there, man. Just to uh... yeah, <laughs> I've heard I've heard plentiful amounts. My uh, my my parents very often uh, tell me about like uh, you know people would accidentally sign to labels or uh, sign record deals or whatever, and then all of a sudden oh no like oh now i'm stuck in this two-year contract of where i have to blah 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 blah. um and like i'm very cautious of that in fact i think i almost fell into one at some point uh but then they asked me to pay them money to sign to them which was when i was like no uh, <laughs> and also uh, if you can find my money then <laughs> you know you can have it but i can't find it either so <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah so like yeah, I just think caution, understanding the business of music, like doing your research, um, which I have a lot to do right now. I'm just kind of an idiot with a dream. <laughs> um, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I like I, research is a good thing to do. Uh, and I have tr- done, you know, little increments of research here and there. Um, and yeah, so that's that's that. Uh, me yeah man like uh prince and then he he changed his name to the unpronounceable symbol or something and then the media just started calling him the artist formerly known as prince and Uh. that was a way to to get around his label obligations and do what he wanted to do and also uh tlc that uh three girl group the hip-hop group um yeah. they had some pretty dark stories to tell about it and mm. um yeah yeah uh, it's um it's I, weird when he gets offered a whole bunch of money up front and basically all that is is a loan so the label is yeah. kind of <laughs> like a bank for music and um yeah. they expect to get all of that money back and then some yeah that's that's why for me personally uh my goal as of now um, as much as I would love to become some massive sensation and be like, oh, look, I did this thing and revolutionized this thing. Um, but I, as of now, I feel like I still have quite a lot to, uh, you know, experience and learn uh, about the industry before I do something big like sign to a label. Like, I'm sure I could get some releases, like if the label said, hey, that's a cool song, can we release it? Um then I'd be like, okay, sure, but just please make sure to do this set of things, uh, like you know, credit me for copyright, pay me the amount that you know is due for the, my production efforts and such, um, and generally just all the things that you'd expect uh, from a label to give you. 
Um, but yeah, I, I, I just think now if some big label uh, came to me, if Warner Brothers came to my came to me and said, "Oi, uh, we want to sign your music," I'd be like, "Nah." <laughs> I, I mean, I keep in touch, but not now. <laughs> yeah, too soon. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I also I did want to ask uh, regarding uh, earlier we were talking about how we came up with names. I want to circle back to that a little bit. Um, how did you come up with your name? This is something that uh, I've been very curious about for a little bit. Uh, so, yeah. Um, it's the name KSM itself was uh, from when I was a, a little kid and um, getting into graffiti and wanting to make a tag. And I started writing a few different things and um, ended up with uh, custom with a K. And then, I mean, that was the full tag. And then you'd do a quick short one, which shortens to KSM. And then I took KSM and spread it out again. So it was KSM, but with all the other letters Ah. in it. And it's a visual (laughs) thing. So letters like E and S and M and K are really fun to write. And you can sort of play around with them a whole lot more than you can say like an I or an O. Yeah. Yeah. but yeah, that's that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, so it's meaningless, but it's a unique name, and um, yeah, yeah, I I sort of used it for my artwork growing up, yeah, and then kind of got left behind. And when I started writing music, um, I thought about a name for ages and ages and ages, and I was releasing a CD soon, and I had to decide, <laughs> <laughs> and so I settled on Oblivious Wisdom. Uh, which I thought was cool. I liked it, um, but maybe a little bit long. And like, yeah. if people come up to you and say, "Hey, oblivious wisdom," it's it doesn't really. It's something that's a bit hard to identify with. Um, yeah, even uh, though I like the concept of it. So yeah, uh, after that, I changed to Book of Changes, which was partly due to just wanting to change my name every single time, all the time. And just never get any recognition because that's the mind yeah. state I was in. <laughs> Plus, it's the I Ching. It's this ancient Chinese book. And that's what the title of it translates to, the Book of Changes. Um, yeah. Uh, and I didn't mind that. But um, when you told people about it and they went to search for you on the internet, they'd just get the I Ching. Yeah. They'd get this 2,500-year-old <laughs> book or something. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I thought about it and it's like, do I want to change my name for down tempo compared to, you know, like Oblivious Wisdom was 145 BPM and then I did Book of Changes at 135 and then I did Book of Changes down tempo. Um, and I was like, I don't really want to keep changing my name all the time and I don't want to change it every time I do something in a different tempo. So I'll just yeah. go with my old artwork name, KSM, because it's unique, it's short, it's simple. I already identify with it. And um Yeah. Yeah, it's I like it, it's good. Um some sometimes people don't know how to pronounce it and they they call me like Kaiasum. But that's close enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, for me, I, I also have uh, a lot of people say base genix, which is fine, honestly. <laughs> it's yeah. okay. Because, like, uh, it, it's one of those things that it's just pronunciation, really. It's like tomato, tomato. It's like, okay, well. <laughs> uh, yeah. Plus, it's know. like bases in your genes. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I never thought of it that way. That's interesting. Yeah, that works. <laughs> um, cool. Um, do you have any issues that you struggle with or deal with in terms of mental health and um is is that um if so do you find that writing music helps with that um okay yeah so i feel like this is a really good time also to talk about it because lately uh it's been kind of rough uh here and there uh because exams uh for me because like Homeschooling is a thing that I started I, just this year, I think. Uh, well, technically last year, late last year. But uh, so now it's like almost constantly crunch time for me. It's 
like every mm-hmm. single day it's just like uh wake up bra- breakfast music uh homework sleep and rinse and repeat mm-hmm. um and you know obviously you start to feel a bit like you know like do this again do this again do this again do this mm-hmm. again and then you just start to feel like okay well what's the point man i'm just gonna do it again um so i try to you know like like fill in sometimes with like playing video games just to kind of distract myself a little bit but that usually doesn't help me it just gives me some immediate entertainment and something else to think about um and then as soon as i quit the game i'm immediately like oh oh yeah i (laughs) i have responsibilities um but i think the, the the music aspect uh usually like sometimes music can be the source of my uh, emotional discomfort but as of now it's probably one of the main things that's keeping me uh very like uh sane I, yeah sane uh yeah. just um so yeah I, I i'm trying to like very often i try to now make a lot of songs that are kind of reminiscent of how i feel at the moment um so or maybe i'd have different projects that cater to different emotions so i'd have like one i'm working on a remix for one of my friends uh which is a surprise uh uh, (laughs) for him but um like i was just thinking uh, on the one hand i wanted to do something nice because he's you know not as well known and he kind of just started recently so i was like hey you know what uh i tried to teach him what I, i can so maybe i'll show him a little nice gesture by also remixing one of his songs and also his songs are pretty swag. So (laughs) like, um, so with that project file, um, it, it kind of represents my, my like bassy sort of like heavy raw sort of, uh, emotions, the, the emotions that I feel like, you know, really strong, really, uh, not really anger, more like just, um, just, just like the rebelliousness in a way um like this this need to fight back but at the same time to conform to what i'm supposed to do and such i'm over explaining myself but you get the idea (laughs) um Mm. and i have other projects which are like pop music kind of things so like uh future pop uh they're very chill they're very like you know groovy nice vocals um and those for me are like representing nostalgia and um, just my, I guess, peace, my inner, my inner peace. Um, and th- yeah, I write the songs then also to give myself some sort of relaxation to feel like eh, it's going to be fine, you know, push through this next couple weeks and you'll be sailing the high seas, uh, and it should be okay in the long run. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of my take on it very sorry for giving like a nine paragraph thesis on it <laughs> so um yeah no that's I just good that's good yeah yeah i think um music is so powerful and you can like write a track to give strength if that's what you yeah. need or to um clear away old emotions and move on and just say like look there it is and then now yeah. it's done and now i can just leave it behind sort of thing yeah, but it will still always be there for you to look back on and know where you were at that point in your life. Yeah, that's that's why I actually um, with my SoundCloud, I don't like delete songs or remove them to, I guess, keep my profile or pers- like like um, musical reputation high or something. Um, mm-hmm. Because a lot of my friends, what they've done is they, uh, you know, they release their old songs, whatever, whatever, whatever. Then they had this, I don't know, revelation in music where they're like, this is what I want to do. This is who I am. I'm going to make an entire EP dedicated to it. And then they delete all their old songs and they're like, boom, there's my new thing. Um, Mm. And, you know, that's cool. I'm not shaming it. It's still like a super powerful way to express yourself. But for me, I don't want to do that. And I don't see myself doing that. Um, I might at some point, maybe I'll realize "Mm, it's not good for ratings. Um, But um, Maybe, maybe I'll feel that way at some point, but as of now, um, I like to be able, like probably once a year or so, I listen to every single one of my songs descending, my most recent song, 
to my first song I ever created. Um, uh, and I listened to that entire playlist of things. Uh, and it, it, it's really inspiring, not only because like, um, you know, looking back um, at, you know, your old self at your old, um, I guess, incarnation, uh, when you're confused and you don't know how to produce the uh, genres and conform to specific guidelines uh, in music, you know, that can lead to, to some interesting ideas that will yeah. then inspire your current self. Um, yeah. But also it's just nice to see, oh, I remember that when I first learned what the Mopas and all does. That was, that was a good song. <laughs> um, like the other day I was messing around with AI. Um, I was messing around with... Uh, a program essentially it's called uh, runway ml uh you can take images or text documents or whatever put a, a ton of them in the ai reads that and, or looks at the pictures and then it tries to generate something similar um so yeah i was messing around with that because i just love technology and ai like that um and i was thinking <laughs> hmm can it write a base genix uh uh description for like a video and stuff I wasn't really going to use it to like put in my video descriptions or anything. I was just doing it just, you know, uh, because I was bored. <laughs> so hmm. I went back, I scrolled through each song starting from my most recent, which is, Oh yeah. Uh, Electromin, uh, a bass house song I released. So scrolled there, copy pasted the thing, put it into the, uh, AI. And then I did the same thing, but, while I was copying pasting, um, I was reading the descriptions and I, I like, I remembered like uh, a lot of different things and how I learned specific things. Like um, at some point I remember I was, my, my song go away. I went through that and I was like, oh, cool. This was, uh, it says that, that this was the song where I tried to make this mel like mix of genres where uh, I took the sort of, simplicity and head bangingness of rhythm uh, and dubstep music and i combined it with like future bass and melodic dubstep so you had mm. the drums go boom <laughs> boom but then i took the big emotional chords and vocals of um you know melodic dubstep and future bass and then i you know gave that the good old rub <laughs> <laughs> and then uh i made that song and it's one of my better performing songs um and uh, also, like, one of my aunt's friends really, really like it. Um, and I played it for him, and it was just like, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, overall, yeah, I think just uh, going back and looking at your old stuff, uh, leaving it there, even if it's just like a thing on your computer, uh, just to remind you where you came from, because honestly, the most... The, I, I, the best thing you can do for yourself is remind yourself who you were versus who you are. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and with SoundCloud, you can actually just open up a separate, another free account and just upload to yeah. that as well. So, you can have multiple accounts, whereas um, other platforms, they don't, they don't like it when you do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, that's interesting that you listen in descending order from the latest to the oldest. Yeah, <laughs> um, I I do a similar thing, but uh, I work from the oldest to the latest usually. Yeah, um, um, the reason I do it like in descending is because I feel like it's something that I kind of have to ease myself into because there are times where I just get so annoyed because I'm like. This song had so much potential and you, you, you butchered it. <laughs> um, so like I would start with my most recent to ju also just a way of saying, okay, most recent song, let's see if it held, uh, stood the test of time and if I still enjoy it as much as I enjoyed it while producing it. Um, yeah. So I do that. I'd look through it. I kind of make a mental checklist. I'd say, so like in the case of Ele Electromint, my recent song, um i would think like oh okay so um the vocal mixing is better than initially uh i still need to find a decent dsing thing um which i found the uh, melda productions uh compressor like 
God bless their soul. Um, but like, um, like, oh, find a better DSer, you know, maybe mix your kicks in this way, uh, you know, to whatever the case may be. Um, and then from there, I can kind of slowly break it down more and more and more and more and more and see what I've improved in like, like a lot. So I can see my old songs where I had vocals in them and just like where they'd get completely drowned out because, you know, vocal mixing didn't exist for me back then. Mm. Um, and where it is now where, you know, I can kind of conceptualize, you know, have the vocal here, kind of treat it as the main thing and all the synths kind of are built around it, like, like, like a, a, a tunnel, I guess. So like, the singer is standing here and then it's like a big yeah, sort of kind of like, like a, a support kind of thing a, a support yeah. system yeah to just hold yeah. it yeah. uh like a like a backdrop like a green screen um <laughs> yeah. so uh yeah something like that um and then yeah so i you just have to kind of think of it that way uh and yeah <laughs> Um, do you ever like trip and listen to your music? Um, no, not really. I don't. I don't think I've ever <laughs> really uh, done that uh, kind of thing. I usually, for me, when I uh, listen to music, like that is my trip. I I just hmm. have. Um, I lie on my bed sometimes, and I just chill to um, whatever song comes on like shelter by porter robinson absolute banger <laughs> um i listen to that just to kind of like clear my head to i guess uh what is the term again uh give myself closure for various things uh or indirect closure i guess um if that makes any human sense um mm -hmm. but uh yeah i don't typically like uh trip on uh, any substance that i just kind of like um go in either with an analytical mindset or just i'm going to enjoy this song and you know just whatever happens during that time happens um yeah yeah i find it's a really valuable tool for me to um to write something and then later on come back when i'm tripping and listen to it because it's like you're hearing it for the first time and the same with artwork, like you can make a picture and because you know exactly how it's built from the ground up, you sort of don't know what it is anymore. You're just so yeah. familiar with it that you can't even see it. And so you leave it alone and then come back tripping and you either look at it or listen to it and it's like, wow. Um, it seems like yeah. something that someone else has made except that that someone else is you and so it gives you this yeah. fresh perspective and it sort of removes a lot of that analytical mindset and just lets whatever the sound is or whatever the picture is come through for what it is yeah um out of like so out of curiosity like um like how like what is the effect that, uh, you know, that kind of thing, you know, the trips and such uh, have had on you and your music? Like, uh, because uh, I, I feel like there's a, a large community surrounding that kind of thing. Um, and I am curious to, you know, know more about, I guess, the, you know, uh, admiration towards the, uh, that kind of, uh, you know, way of seeing things, I guess, if, that makes any sense. Yeah, I mean, for me, I started out in like alternative and punk and metal and then got introduced to hard trance. Um, and there was a pretty big scene here uh, in the early 2000s. And um, that's basically written for big clubs and for MDMA and mm. um, like really big melodic anthem music which just is you sort of just rush listening to it but if you're on mdma you rush times a thousand and it's just <laughs> a euphoria sort of thing um and then uh i had a friend introduce me to psytrance and i hated the name and i never wanted to listen to it because i thought it sounded stupid <laughs> <laughs> 
and um uh, i had a house party one day and um had a bunch of friends over and this guy wanted me to put some psytrance on and i was like nah fuck that i'll if you want some trippy music i'll play you something that i've got that's it's good trance and it's trippy and so i put on uh, asterix eye to eye and he comes up to me he's like dude this is psytrance <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, well, in that case, I like my side trance. I just don't like the one you listen to. <laughs> um, I, and side trance is written for acid, basically. Yeah, so I've heard. Uh, from that yeah. same YouTuber I, 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 or uh, music producer I learned of, uh, I told you about uh, earlier in the, the cast. Um, he the, like that the first time I heard about Psytrance is actually from him, the way he did a tutorial on how to uh, create Psytrance. Um, and I thought it was really interesting at the time. I mean, at that point, I didn't even like, like if it wasn't dubstep, I didn't want to make it. <laughs> um, but looking back now, especially after uh, Virtual Riot combined dubstep and uh, 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 psychedelic trance, like, I look at it and I'm, it's it's a really sick genre, honestly. Like, um, you know, it's like 150 BPM. You can have the four on the floor, boom, 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 boom. Mm. Um, and you can also be very creative with the plucky sounds, the sequencers in the background, whatever. Um, and I think I, I should actually try that at some point. I think I actually one of my old old songs, uh, one of the ones that slip between the cracks of my mind and I forget very frequently that I even released. Um, I think the second drop I did a Psytrance thing because it's right when uh, Hysteria from Virtual Riot came out and I was like, oh my God, oh, it's so cool. I'm going to do that. And then I did that. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll give it a go again uh, and see if it works out any better uh, for me. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd like to try writing Psytrance as well. I mean, when I was first getting into it, I couldn't write. And then, uh, so I just started out writing progressive, which was a new thing back then. And um, I've got like a handful of psi, but it's more just 145 BPM rather than full on psi trance. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, I forgot what I was going to say. There's something <laughs> about um, when you're on a dance floor and you're high and you're just moving your body to the music you sort of learn what works and what doesn't and then yeah. you come back later on and you sort of do a dance test with your own music to see like what sound will fit in with what body movement at what time <laughs> and um just think of it like that just like yeah. what's going to really move people and just there's so many cool ways to do it. You can sort of like do a fake out and like pretend to bring yeah. something in, but then drop it out and slam something else in and just like that shock of a, a new beat or something. Yeah. yeah it's Those really fun. producers love to do that. They're like, <laughs> oh, you think it's this thing? No, it's not. Oh. Uh, and then they throw it into something else. So you'd have yeah. these big scenes like, oh, oh, and then they'd just be like, you know, weird or funny vocal or weird sound effect. And then it would just be like, a minimalist like wing, 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 wing. <laughs> and then you'd be like so you'd have either the reaction of oh that's so cool like me uh anytime any producer makes anything um or that person that like doesn't know much about experimental music so they'll be like oh that's a cool synth and then they'll be like okay <laughs> um yeah, I, I don't know. I, I like doing that kind of thing. I realize I do switches very often in uh, a lot of my songs where I'd have saws and big melodic stuff and then wow, 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 wow. And then uh, melodic stuff and then wow, 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 wow. I don't know. I just, it's it's the thing that's grown on me. I just like to, you know, bring them together and, the, you know, bridge the gap between the two worlds that are my melodic side and my uh heavy bass side so yeah yeah that's a a tricky one to do because heavy bass tends to take over everything yeah. if you want a big bass sound it sort of dominates the track whereas if you want yeah. a good melodic driving sound it's you can't have a huge bass line getting in the way of it the whole time yeah um but that's the that's the thing what if 
what if you somehow find a way to make make them mix uh, in a way? Um, which is also why like going into dubstep to learn how to mix is like going in with a stick to fight uh, an alligator. Um, <laughs> like um, it, it, it's. It, I mean, it, I'm so grateful that the, the the community for EDM and dubstep is so lively. Like, uh, you know, one YouTuber or whatever stops producing videos for it. Cool. Ten more. Um, <laughs> so it's it, and it's also cool because uh, even like with acoustic sort of like band uh, recordings and music like that, there's a ton of resources for that as well. So through that, I'd be able to learn how to mix uh, this kind of stuff. So uh, even making reference back to my song, Go Away, um, which was a very good example of fusing heavy bass and, um, you know, big sort of uplifting souls, um, you get, I mean, uh, the mixing on it is questionable. It's presentable, but there were, there are a uh, couple holes that uh, I'm thinking of re-releasing and plugging those holes um, to make it not suck uh but like um yeah so for me i i had the saws the big you know chords and whatever and then underneath where there would be like a mid bass a thing that creates all the mid-range and heavy sort of uh future bassy sort of crunch um i had a dubstep bass do, performing the same sort of future bass whomping movement that the saws were so they blended together then I, you know, twisted some knobs, pushed some EQs, uh, and, you know, it came out fairly presentable. And I can see myself playing that at some big show. Um, again, probably going to have to remix and re-release uh, everything in that song because, yeah, <laughs> it was, it was uh, questionable. Uh, so, but yeah, uh, I think it's possible. I just think you need a like think outside the box uh, mm -hmm. and i'm sure there are plentiful amounts of people that will come up with better ideas for that kind of thing um to say uh oh what if uh i don't know the super souls where are the base and they put like um a filter on the saws the big chords to make it seem like they were doing that same sort of dubstep wow wow movement uh which i've tried uh i <laughs> i tried to get an interesting sound out of that and i it wasn't that appealing. I thought it was cool, but it was me. Um, but yeah, I I feel like there are many ways to do it. But for me, just LFO tool, everything else kind of comes <laughs> up. That's all you need, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I ninety percent of my talent is LFO tool. <laughs> it's yeah. It does everything pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, one of my old producer friends said that to me one day. He's just like low frequency oscillators, and just like trailed off into the distance as if that was just like. <laughs> 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 if you only hear one piece of advice I've ever said to you, just listen to that one. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, with it, just like I'd say to be uh to. To make dubstep, get yourself a copy of Vital or Serum, OTT, and LFO tool. Then you're set for life. Uh, I'm joking, obviously. That like you can make a decent like you can rev revolutionize bass music with Operator in Ableton or like FL Keys. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Mm -hmm. um, like there because. You know that that also then gives you a unique edge. You're working kind of on a budget, and you kind of have to make do. So in turn, you kind of learn these new sort of workarounds. Um, like, yeah, uh, I had a friend, a producer friend, who also did dubstep, um, and I listened to some of their songs, and the the the, the bass sounds really interesting. They're very formenty and vowelly, uh, and I was like, oh, that's so cool. How do you make those patches? And I looked and it was like a soul wave to like two soul waves, one, one octave down or something, some distortion, OTT, and, you know, just filters. Uh, and I'm like, whoa, that's cool. Uh, it's a very simple patch and it sounds very interesting. Um, and the reason they were, you know, so minimalist about it was because they were coming from uh, this 
like free doll uh daw called yeah, reaper uh, it wasn't reaper it was it, w- it was even less known than reaper um mm. it was b- a, like borderline it looked like a bit of a toy like a thing you'd give to a 10 year old to just see if they like music um but it was also oddly complex like i tried it and i oh, was like, like garage how- band <laughs> It wasn't. It was like, Garage Band is actually pretty much. <laughs> uh, but I can't even remember. I would tell you if I remembered. Uh, maybe I'll I'll, I'll uh, dig up some old DMs and see what it was. But it was rather complex for like something that looked like a toy, right? Uh, mm. It functioned and had all the various functions of a DAW, but it looked like a toy. So I was fooled into thinking like, okay, so you know, see, surely I can just twist this knob and it will produce the entire song for me. But um, instead it was like, oh no, you have to take this and modulate that by the volume. And then you have a sound um, at all. Uh, and then you'd have to do a bunch of other stuff just to get the like, you know, the pitch of the whatever. And then you'd have to like, it's a whole nother thing to put effects on it. And I was just like, okay, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> So, yeah, and it would make sense why they're so minimalist about it because, you know, the wiring and sequencing of everything, um, you know, it, it, it didn't provide a lot of visual, it didn't provide a lot of feedback regarding, you know, what you're actually doing. So you kind of just have to go by ear. Mm. Um, and also when you work on a budget, you kind of learn that way. Um, so for me, like samples, I'm heavily reliant on samples which is why splice is easily one of the best purchases i've ever made um so yeah i think it's just finding you know that thing that uh you can hone in on to make you good (laughs) yeah i think uh hardware is quite similar to that it's limited but there's so much you can do with it but at the same time it has to kind of be quite simple and um yeah, yeah. I, I quite like all the old sort of drum machine sequencer kind of sounds that come out of that. Uh, it's got a really different quality to something that's like all just software. Yeah. Um, but I would also just, uh, yeah. I would like to uh, bring up also a little bit more about mental health that Sorry for the, 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 like, jump cut segue. Go for um, it. But, like, uh, I don't know. I just feel like I, I, I also want to say, like, regarding the things I said about earlier, um, about, like, mental health and such, I just think as an artist, you should uh, to just find time to do your thing. Be it, like, if music makes you feel at peace and, you know, relaxed and whatever, then do music. Um, but then again, also don't let it become your life. Like for like at some point, uh, even to some extent now I'm very, very, very like into music. I'm, uh, borderline obsessed, I guess. Um, <laughs> but like, uh, yeah. So, well, okay. I wouldn't say obsessed. I just, you know, spend a lot of time on it and, you know, it's good because you, you know, hone your talent, you learn things come out of it and you know end up being good um but i just think you need to find time for yourself just hop on a game of like roblox or something chill with your lads your mates you know just kind of like do your own thing take a moment even if it doesn't feel like you're stressed out or whatever just take a bit because um you know you really do just want to take time to to do yeah i think you know, just, just things that make you feel uh, at home and comfortable. Um, mm. Like for me, sometimes uh, what I do is I just sit in a game. I call up maybe one of my friends. I say, oh, you want to play Minecraft? And we just chill in uh, a server. We build bases. We take on these super ambitious projects uh, in the game. And yeah, I think it's just a really good way to uh, unwind and um also i hate to like again you know just 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 brick wall into the next thing 
um, which is uh, like inspiration, writer's block. Yeah, we all, you you know that I know that it sucks. <laughs> like, yep. um, yeah, writer's block, and it, it, it's one of those things that also really misunderstood because somebody who doesn't write music will be like, oh, but just just write a hit song dummy stinky bum bum why don't you write a hit song go do it <laughs> like um you know it's it, it's obviously not that simple um and even when you're inspired it's not that simple now when you're not inspired now that just becomes a whole other thing right um so to now um to now like try to create a new idea when you have all these other things in mind, it becomes a very taxing process. Um, so there are two things I can suggest regarding inspiration and getting yourself to, um, I guess, feel inspired and motivated again, which is A, um, don't sit and wait for in uh, inspiration. Don't kind of sit in your chair and be like, okay, I'll be inspired. Just if I sit here and contemplate uh, the pH scale that I learned in sixth grade. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, maybe you will, but overall, you know, the, the odds are very slim. It's inspiration is also something you can seek. Right. Um, but then at the same time, um, you like, like the, the second uh, thing I can suggest, which is a bit of a contradiction, um, just take the day off. Like in the position I'm in now, um, I'm, you know, very able to just say, okay, not feeling inspired. Cool. I'm, I'm going to book it for the day. Um, but, you know, obviously other people don't have that kind of convenience where like, you know, if you're producing for massive labels or whatever, if you're like in Warner Brothers and you produce, if you're Hans Zimmer or something, I don't know. Um, like, you know, you don't always have the, the, the time or the space to just say, okay, I'm going to just sit in, in a lobby uh, and play COD with the boys. Um, <laughs> You know, you don't always have that opportunity. So, but I think really, if you're not feeling inspired, you physically like looking at your DAW like makes you sick. Um, <laughs> like <laughs> I have that sometimes where I look at my door and I'm like, no, <laughs> I love you, but not today. Not today, yeah. please. Yeah. Um, so just, you know, accept the fact that you're not inspired. Fighting it honestly just makes it worse because you start thinking to yourself, oh, but am I? even good? Can I even produce? I, is this where I cap out? Is this where I, you know, it, am I going to quit now? Because, and then it's irrational thoughts. Just take a book <laughs> and read. Like, um, now obviously this won't solve like other problems that come with writer's block and various other things like the depressions and the what have you. Um, and for that is it's a lot more ambiguous to me because I having also been through various depressive phases, uh, I, there's no real formula to it. You can't really say, you know, wake up one morning, get some water, boom, you're happy now. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's not that it's not simple like that. Like a lot of people will say like, Oh, but you need to lighten up. And it's like, okay, would you mind showing me how, um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like, um, I just think that the little things, uh, eating healthy, uh, or e even eating enough, um, mm. or like, again, not everyone has that convenience. Uh, and to that I can, uh, you know, I'm not entirely sure what to say, but I will say that, you know, uh, just, you know, do your best to make sure that you as a person are a healthy person. Um, I personally still need to work on my healthy eating and sports and stuff, uh, and just getting exercise. Cause now I'm sitting a lot because of the studying and the, uh, lying on my bed, listening to music and playing Roblox. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think just, uh, you need to overall, the lesson is find time for yourself. Think not just about music like just fi find a way to to interact with people on another level um not to say that you can't uh, in, uh interact with people uh regarding music uh but just don't like rely on it as 
your crutch. Don't let it, essentially the entire summary. Don't let music become your life. That will cause problems in the long term or and the short term, uh, and or the short term. But yeah, uh, I think I've said <laughs> the thing. Yeah, I think breaks are really important, and you know, you might even just be sitting there writing a track for seven hours in a row and not eating, and then get to a point yeah. where you realize you need to stand up and walk away for a while and come back and keep going then but i mean during that time it's you sort of let it all go and then when you come back it's it's a lot easier to see where you're actually up to and what to do next and what you might have started yeah. doing maybe that's not the best idea and to get rid of that or um and yeah it's yeah. it's a bit of a balancing act between i think discipline is is the highest sort of aim to go for rather than inspiration or motivation because they can come and go yeah uh, if you have the uh, discipline to put in the work that's great but also you don't want to force it and end up presenting something that you love to do yeah yeah uh i actually had a i have a friend that um you know she uh she wanted to do like writing she wanted to write stories she'd love telling stories she would she, she tells me this story very frequently, but like she would um, very often like just be telling people stories. Oh, this happened, this happened. Um, and at some point she wanted to go into writing um, and then um, she just became so hell bent on uh, the, you know, getting, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, thing. I forget, just uh, basically just, uh, releasing a book you know getting it uh like a publishing deal that that word <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah uh she wanted to get published like really uh uh badly and i that that story i relate to a lot uh and it's a very personal uh one for me because it's like i don't want to push myself into a position where i lose interest in something that i've always loved because i went in a little too hard um and yeah so again it's a balancing act true all right well um i guess we can talk about the stuff that we're going to do together in the future and maybe just right, hash check. out some ideas because um we've been in touch a couple of times before but um we're really just in the beginning sort of phases of um yeah figuring it all out and trying to learn exactly how it's going to work and um, the directions it's going to head in, which at this point are just open. And uh, I kind of like that, but it's also like, well, if we want to actually get something done, we need to focus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we've got a project happening already uh, that's set at 140 BPM and um, I've just <laughs> messed with some of the beats really just – slapdash put it in there and you've yeah. you've been able to add in midi and get all this melody and harmony in there already um and that's a cool start but um yeah i wish i'd had more time to work on it and more uh discipline i suppose to put more <laughs> energy into it epic callback yeah it's, <laughs> didn't want to force it that's all <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I did have a quick look at it tonight for like an hour and a half and um, just tried a few things like opening up an old project and bouncing down waves out of that and seeing what happens and then um, yeah. also just trying with the new project to get a kick and a bass in there, which I did, but it's um, it's still very sloppy and it's not. It's not yeah. anything that um, is really sort of grabbing me at the moment. So, um, mm. uh, well, it all starts somewhere. Uh, you know, you got to, like, like for me, I have a lot of product, uh, projects like that that I'll probably never open again. But, um, like, I make something, I'm like, oh, that's cool. Uh, even if it's, like, a, a soul wave with a filter on it, and then I, it's okay. All right, I did that. Uh, it's sloppy. It's not really anything that captivates anyone. But I, I just think it's more the time that you put into it. Um, the 
you know, it's just getting the ideas flowing, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it sounds pretty uh, cool and has a lot of potential, the uh, little track that's that we have going. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm also learning guitar, so maybe I can somehow <laughs> include that. <laughs> as soon as I learn how to do more complex things with it, maybe, yeah. I don't know, I doubt. But uh, yeah. Yeah, guitar Just, is um, really fun. I like guitar. Yeah. Mm, and I think uh, especially acoustic guitar and electronic music, it works really well. Yeah. If I had a dime <laughs> for every time you uh, <laughs> hear an acoustic guitar and like a pop song, I have so many samples that are just like acoustic guitars playing that same like boom, 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 boom kind of uh, pattern uh, or chord progression uh, just in different keys and BPMs. Um, mm. It's effective, but it's <laughs> like... Um, yeah, I, I, I really like that sound. It's a very clean, emotional sound. Um, mm. and I should probably also start trying it for myself. I've, you know, created some artificial sounding, uh, like electric guitars with some of the like amps and stuff in Ableton. Um, but I don't think I've ever tried anything acoustic. I, I have been thinking of just recording me messing around on the guitar uh and turning that into something uh so yeah maybe it's, <laughs> maybe it's interesting yeah um so have you got uh fl installed again oh <laughs> yeah i should probably get on that uh, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. uh yeah I, the thing is it's like i i'm trying to get the password for the account that has my paid subscription uh yeah. for it um and i completely forgot the password uh so now i'm trying to just go through all the whatevers uh and also uh the internet's been rather slow which means installing fl studio takes a day um (laughs) so um it's kind of a whole process that i'm trying to get over and get through uh with but till then um i'm yeah I I actually can maybe even, if needs be, I can boot up the project files on my other, my older computer uh, and mess around with the project from there. Um, So then I can, you know, utilize FL Studio there. Uh, So, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, cool. Um, Anything else you want to talk about? Um, I... Sound design? (laughs) Sound design. I thought you might be into sound design. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. I'm I'm heavily obsessed with sound design. I love making sounds. I have entire sessions sometimes where I just sit down with Vital or Serum or Pendulate or whatever synth I use, and I just, like, knobs and... um, I mess around. I see whatever, like, thing I can... Like, even Melda Productions, again, God bless their soul. (laughs) Like um, they, 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 there's this one plugin called Phase Disperse, which, or is it called that? Or Random Phase, something like that, um, where it gives you this like little window um, where you can just mess around. It gives you, it starts you off with a little soul wave and mm-hmm. then you can draw in uh, how it affects the phase, I guess, of the sound. Uh, and what I do is I just scribble. I turn up the mix amount for full and I just mess around with the, um, what are they called? Uh, the, I guess, uh, not presets, the thingies that make the sound different. They're, they're buttons, to be honest. Uh, the, I mess the around filters. with the, yeah, something like that. The little, like, um, I hate forgetting. Um, <laughs> but, like, yeah, I just, did like, like, I turn it to max, scribble something. And it always makes this like squishy sort of washed out uh, mess of a noise, but in some way still feels very sculpted. Um, Or even if it is a mess, then I can just sculpt it with an EQ or mess around with the LFOs, uh, LFO tool, you know, uh, again, Mm. God bless. (laughs) Um, Mm. So um, yeah, I am head over heels obsessed with uh, sound design and uh, rightfully so, because you know, dubstep 
Yeah, I think um, it might be Harma, the VST in that's native in FL. It has yeah. some weird function where you can just load a JPEG image into it. <laughs> yeah. And, and it'll, it'll start messing with filters and everything based on that. Uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to playing with that more. And uh, also just granulizers. Have you ever messed with those? Right. Yeah, I actually were on the the the, the private uh, call that at some point, and I showed you that method with Serum, uh, yeah. where you import a sample uh, into the noise uh, oscillator, which doubles up as a sampler, um, and you just like mess around with the volume and the pitch, and you can create really unique, interesting sounds uh, that create this. Uh, I don't. It, it has. I I can't really. See, tell if it has a distinct sound but it does very much yield a very unique sort of uh sound in like singular like as in you can make a unique sound um, but yeah. like um it also helps but it helps for anything actually uh bass design making little pads and atmospheres um i do kind of hope that uh Steve, uh, Steve Buda, the, you know, creator of the synth, uh, kind of hones in on that granular sort of thing. Um, and I'm thinking of uploading a video about it. It's just like, uh, serums, granulizer, youth, uh, thingy, making bases granularly. I, uh, <laughs> I've never been the title on the spot kind of person. Um, but, uh, yeah, I sometimes just, if I'm too lazy to like, make wavetables or anything. Um, <clears throat> I would take some virtualized bass or uh, eliminate bass sound or loop, or maybe even just a drum loop, just boom, boom, boom. Um, put that in, I'd mess around with the pitches and whatever, and you'd get something interesting. Uh, so yeah, I think that's a very fun little thing that uh, you know can create some fun sounds. Yeah, have you heard of a uh, a YouTuber called Seamless R? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everyone in the EDM community probably knows him. Um, yeah, I I watch uh, quite a few of his tutorials here and there. Um, yeah. Like he's not my main go to, but he definitely has uh, influenced my sound quite a bit, uh, and I'm very very grateful to him and also all the other tutorial YouTubers and such that you know create such amazing content uh and i hope you know i i, I kind of want to go into that as well uh, myself i also want to start producing tutorials or maybe even song breakdowns where i would um record a video of me saying hey what's popping i'm gonna show you how i made this sound uh and then people can watch it and be like oh that's creative and then apply that same sort of logic in their production and you know the cycle continues, breed new artists, those artists teach new artists, and then, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just giving something back sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, f I feel like if I did that, I'd have to record it from the beginning because I wouldn't be able to remember how I made it. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I, yeah, I, I, I sometimes have something like that where I, I'd completely forget that I put in an entire element of the song and I'd come back to the project file like I maybe a year or so later and be like, why, why is this here? Was this always here? <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, I think it's, but it also shows that, you know, there's some seamless sort of, uh, I guess, interaction with your music to say that you're not producing in a, uh, I guess, conceptual sort of mathematical way and you're producing more just kind of out of like, you know, this is what I think is, you know, ideal. This is what I think would help the song and you get some interesting sounds afterwards. So, yeah. Yeah, I think I've started a lot of good tracks just by following a tutorial and doing my own interpretation of it and then yeah, pretty quick you're just like, okay, this is actually something I can turn into something i think yeah uh, like 90 percent of my tracks are just me playing around I'm, i open it up and i just play and just eventually something sounds good and i just yeah uh, yeah um 
I, but you do you do I, get those occasional ones where it's like it just never becomes anything. It's just a cool sound. <laughs> yeah, I, you 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 mess around and like I was I was gonna make a song that based on like like the 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 vocal uh the check vocal thing where um because a lot of like dubstep producers have this like vocal that says check because it's supposed to be I guess in reference to when uh you know the uh dj would go up to the mic and say check check to make sure the mic is you know good so very often uh dubstep producers would have this big vocal that's just checking like the middle of the track to fill an offbeat or something so i was like okay what if i made a song that was that um i sequenced the drums like a, it was like one bar and then like one hitting bass and then uh, an unfinished bass and that was the entire song i just didn't bother afterwards uh i completely forgot i had it in my uh library in fact mm -hmm. um so yeah but then again you know you learn from those kind of things you uh and who knows maybe you'll come back to it in a bit and be like uh oh wow this was a great idea actually i quite like this and i you know like where i was going with it and then you know you do something with it cool all right well um yeah i'm looking forward to doing more work together and um seeing yeah. what comes out of it and um i'm pretty flexible with genres and tempos and everything I, it's just like if it sounds good i like it <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so um yeah thanks thanks for talking with us today man uh, it's been really cool to hang out for a bit yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks for your time and uh, your insights into things. I think you seem pretty switched on and, and level-headed, which is really good. Yeah. Uh, um, thanks, man. I, <laughs> uh, I really, I, you know, it's a very exciting opportunity and I'm, uh, I'm glad you could have me on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thanks for this, this time to talk about what I love and, uh, you know, sharing that with uh, other people and uh, beyond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, man. So if people want to find you and your music, uh, how can they do that? Uh, yeah, so there's uh, on, on my Instagram, it's just Bass Genix. Uh, on, actually, on anything, it's just uh, Bass Genix. Uh, uh, just look up Bass Genix in your browser. Bam, <laughs> front page, baby. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what that's what a good artist name will get you front page. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, so just base Genix with basically everything. Um, yeah. Gotta keep the flame on max. I'ma keep it going till there ain't nothing left. Gotta keep the flame on max. I'ma keep it going till there ain't nothing left. Gotta keep the flame on max. I'ma keep it going till there ain't nothing left. Gotta keep the flame on max. I'ma keep it going till there ain't nothing left. Nothin left. You can catch me in the pit. I'm breaking next and I'm riding out. Reckless energy, I'm never signing out. Throw my elbows up and my money out. Cause I came to I'm breaking next and I'm running out. Reckless energy, I'm never signing out. Put my elbows up and my money out. Cause I came to get.